Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Fun with the Nuns. Today we're studying Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Let's get started. Okay, in Ecclesiastes chapter number 8, Solomon is going to wrestle with a lot of the same questions that I hear people have today. So Solomon is going to deal first with a king. Okay, now he is a king. But he's putting himself in the place of somebody who is serving a king. And what he, what he imagines is, he says, what do you do if the people that are in charge of you are wrong? How do you honor them with, when you believe that they're not right? Now, I'm going to tell you when this question matters. It matters when the book of Romans tells us that we are to honor a government or a governor or an, a person in authority. Well, what do we do when we disagree? Now, that's not a, that's not a question that only happens like in, a, in, in theory. So when the Romans heard that and they heard Paul, they were living under a Roman Caesar that was killing Christians. And so they were asking this question, how do we honor the authorities that God has in our lives if they are dishonoring him? Let me tell you, here's another one. Here's another easier way that this happens. So sometimes people will ask this. How do I honor my mom or my dad if my mom and my dad aren't honoring God? Do I still have to honor my mom and my dad if they're dishonoring God? And the answer is yes. Why? Because God says, honor your father and your mother. And so when, when you read that, well, you go, I don't understand. They're, they're not doing what's right. And then we would say, we would say this, yes, but God has decided that whatever they do, their position is worthy of honor. Now, here's what Solomon says about it. He says about a king, he says, I say, keep the king's command for the sake of your oath to God. So it's not about them, it's about you and God. Now, let me, let me tell you how, how best to live this out. Whenever you look in your Bible, there are a lot of people in the Bible who honored, who honored kings and were respectful even when they respected bad kings. For instance, do you remember when Daniel was thrown into a lion's den? Mm -hmm. Was he ever mean or disrespectful to the king? No. Even when the king comes to get him out of the lion's den, he says, Daniel. Well, the king threw him in a lion's den. What does Daniel say? He said, oh, king, live forever. That was respectful. What about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They're thrown in a fiery furnace. But were they rude and dis... No. So they honored the Lord even while they disagreed with the king. What about king Queen Esther? So Queen Esther, her husband was the king, and he was doing terrible things. Well, she approached him with respect because he's the king, even though she didn't agree with him. Did you know that in our lives, there are some things we can do where we, have, we say, I will honor God even if I disagree with this person. And it shows maturity because what it means is we can be mature, we can be faithful, we can be kind, we can be respectful even if we disagree. So we can disagree without being disagreeable. All right, what did you get out of this? Because I liked yours. So my takeaway, so in the Bible, Solomon, he talks a lot about wisdom. And um, in verse, in wisdom is not being like smart. And it's not about how many degrees in college you have. Or it's not about your grades. Um, but in verse 5, it explains what wisdom really is. And it says, um, a wise heart knows the right time and procedure. So what it's saying is um, someone who's wise uh, they know the right thing to do in the right time to do it. Oh, yeah. that's good. So say that again. A wise heart knows what? The right thing and the right time to do it. The right thing and the right time to do it. I like that, John. That's good. Warren Wiersbe said this. He said, it's not easy to be a consistent Christian in such a complicated evil world. But we can ask for the wisdom of God, and we can receive that wisdom by faith. Let me show you this last piece. This last piece comes down in verse 16, okay? Solomon says, when I applied my heart to know wisdom and to see the business that is done on earth, even though one sees no sleep day or night, then I saw all the work of God that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun. 
For though a man labors to discover it, he will not find it. Moreover, though a wise man attempts to know it, he will not be able to find it. You know what that says? That says that even the wisest man, even if he studied day and night, never sleeping, never taking a day off, never, never doing anything but studying life constantly, that man would never be able to have all of the questions of life answered. Because the only one that knows everything is who? God. And so what this is going to do for Solomon, it's going to say that the person that has to have every question in life answered, they're going to live a really frustrated life. And so the goal here can't then be that we have to have all of our questions answered. The goal has to be, how can I live by faith even if I never get my answers? Well, what if then Jesus has answered that by saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father except through me. So, even though I won't have all the answers, I can know that Jesus is the way. Even though I don't know everything that's always right, because I'm just not that smart or that wise, Jesus says, I am the truth. And even if I say, I don't know all there is to know about how things operate in this world, Jesus says, it's okay. I am life. If I know that I can get to the Father through Jesus, then the wisest thing I could ever do with my life is to run to Jesus. I think that answers uh, Ecclesiastes chapter number eight. I hope you enjoyed this one. We'll see you back tomorrow in chapter number nine. Have a great day. Bye. Bye.